Good day everyone, it's Caitlin and today we are making early 19th century baby caps. Hello and welcome to my giant pile of fabric. So we are making uh, baby caps today, the earlier styles. So basically very early 19th century to like the 1830s. Um, and I have here some original baby caps. This is an interesting, they're very hard to date. This one, um, it's completely hand stitched and, I'm, and it's made of this really pretty designed fabric that is kind of you know, felted on the inside. It's almost like, uh, not felted, but um, flannel almost. And it feels like cotton. It's almost like Canton flannel, but instead of the twill on the outside, it's the design. Um, and this one is hand sewn. I actually have four of these little caps and they all are all different. So I don't think they're all from the same people, but um, yeah, this one's hand stitched and it has waved braid, kind of what it's very kind of similar to what we would call brick rack today, only it's not as pointy and more great waved and it's cotton and not, you know, rayon. And then the larger one is made of just straight diaper. The other two, I have another one that's diaper but it's completely hand stitched, different trimming, looks earlier, and then I have a totally different one. So um, I've made patterns off of these two, but they're basically the same style cap. And this style of cap you see a lot in the 18th century. Uh, for things like quilted caps, heavily embroidered caps, anything that's really thick and heavy, they use this style. And apparently it was even going on later in the 19th century because this is a machine sewn cap, so obviously it's later. But um, same style prevails. So I'm going to cut two of each size, that way I have one to wear plus a spare. So those are going to be the diaper caps. And I have this nice little trimming here. It has a little bit of the rickrack type here. It's actually very similar to this particular trim. So I think we're going to use this on all four of the diapers. because I think I have enough. So this next cap we're going to make two of. Um, they're going to be the fancier caps. Um, and we're going to use some nice lawn for that, which I thought I ironed, but apparently I did not. Maybe I ironed like part of it. So the cap is basically very similar to this. There's the side piece, but this part is smaller and it's entirely made of lace, an assertion type deal. And I have this original lace that's in pretty good shape and it's fairly thick. So I think we're going to use this as the insertion. So I need two of these for each cap. So um, my other cap, yes, so we're going to use it just regular linen, which is right here. It's a cotton linen blend, actually. And this one will have a ruffle, a self-fabric ruffle. I just cut four caps. Oh well, I'll only make two of them up. So again, this is going to turn to itself. Have ruffles. We're going to make a ruffle. I'm pretty sure this rips. One of them can sometimes be a bear to rip. Okay, this is not too bad. Alright, so I think that's our cutting. We have all of our caps. We have our trim. Alright, let's get started with our sewing. And right sides together, I'm going to pin one of the fronts to the back bit. And I am attaching it the same way the original does, which is with a back stitch. And um, then going over and just whipping the edges. Now that I'm at the end of this little section, I can go back over, do like three, sometimes four little stitches, pull it through, two, three, and just go across the whole thing just like that. And it just keeps the edges from raveling as much. It's a Kind of like surging, but 19th century style. 
When I get this done, I will tie it off and then I gotta sew on the other side of this cap. So now that I have all the caps sewn, I'm sewing in the trim. This is gonna be for the smaller cap, which really just has the weight braid or rig rack type thing. So I'm sewing uh, basically to where when I turn this thing over, you will only see the top of the trim, not the whole thing. So when I turn it over, you will see that, which looks a lot more like this, the original. All right, now that I have that done, I'm gonna take a tiny little bit of uh, scrap fabric and we're gonna sew this on. So we are gonna go the other direction. So the reason I do this in two steps so instead of putting this down and then putting some top and then sewing it, because it's very hard to see where to sew. But if I put that on first, I now have a little line for my previous stitching, so I know exactly where to go. And I'm going to go all the way around, just like this, so we have our trim and this edging sewn on and my next step will be turning this on the inside entirely so it looks more like that and you just see the trim and we'll whip all that down and of course grab the ties and all that in all right so i turned it inside out or right side out and you can kind of see the trim and all that so i'm putting in the back ties right now and I just guesstimated how long to make this. And then I kind of back stitch it into where it needs to go. And this is just to tighten the back, just in case it doesn't fit the child. And now we're gonna stitch this in. So what I did to fold it, is I folded that all the way over, as much as it would go, and then folded it over again. And I'm gonna stitch that down. It's going all the way across the cap. And that's what it's looking like and on the front side. That's what it looks like. So then I can actually move these to gather up the very back of the cap if need be. I can really iron this flat and down when I get completely done. And because this is trimmed and all that, the only thing we have left to do for this particular cap is to put on the ties. And I think we're going to go ahead and work on the larger ones of the style, so the diaper caps that are larger. It's a slightly different shape to it. You just need to add in just a little bit of her ties. Let me just get this one out so I can measure how long. So I'm making two of each cap, so I need to make sure I have four ties. One more tie, and then I'll be done with this cap. I gotta make another of the exact same cap, and I will have you back here to join me when we work on the second type of diaper cap. Okay, so I'm still working on the diaper ones, but I did something a little bit differently with this one that I wanted to just show y'all. So because the bigger original cap, because it has more of the trim showing and not just the rickracky part, but like more of that trim, I laid it kind of offset. So it's not right up against the edge like it was last time, it's further down. So I just stitched through this very first hair of a um, part of the, the trim so that when it gets turned over, you see that instead of just this top part. But now I'm going through and I'm putting the um, binding on just as we did before. So I am matching that up to the, the raw edge of the actual cap. So that's done basically the same. But I just wanted to say that since the trim was different, we did have to um, make that little adjustment there. All right, let's work on the next cap. We're going to do the little laced insertion one. That'd be an easy one to, to move on with. So I'm taking each end of the cap or each side of the cap and I'm just hemming the parts that are going to attach the lace. So this is the front and the side or it's front and the bottom, sorry, excuse me. Um, and I am leaving those raw for right now. But I'm just folding over, doing a very narrow hem for the parts that are going to attach to the lace. 
So I have that now, and I have a little bit side. Wait. This is the top. Okay. Um, and so I have the other piece here with the lace already attached to it. And what I have to do, and my lace has this lovely little spot on it, but there's little holes. And so I'm using those holes to kind of stitch this on. There's a variety of stitches you could do. There's some really nice lace um, attaching stitches that are for heirloom sewing and that would be the most decorative and way to attach this. But I'm going for simple here. So I am just taking the very edge and I'm just whipping it on. So it's very simple. I'm going to iron that a little flatter so it becomes a little bit you know, bigger. Now the original had a pretty little decorative stitch right along this edge where the hem is. And I don't think I'm going to do that right now. That might be a down the road thing if I feel up to it. Right now it's try to get a lot of this stuff done before I get pregnant. But it kind of has this nice little insertion bit. And my next step is going to be hemming the ruffle, I guess, which is what this is right here. So it's the ruffle. Uh, I had the panel stitched together. I just don't have um, it's stitched together, or I'm uh, sorry, I don't have it hemmed. So that'd be my next step, and then we can attach this ruffle. So you can kind of see how quickly that went through. It took me six minutes to do that one seam. Alright, so I hemmed the little ruffle, put a little gathering thread in it. So I'm taking the edge of the cap and I'm putting it all around, just making sure my gathers are evenly spaced out. So I'm doing a back stitch, make sure it's really secure. Yeah, the little ruffle goes all the way around. And the original has a little um, strip of ribbon in the very back to help hold it against baby's head. I'm looking at this, I'm not entirely sure it's needed. It looks like it's going to fit just fine without the little ribbon. Um, so I think I'm going to forego that and just see if it works. And you know, if I need to add a little ribbon later, it's you know five minutes of hand work um, when I have a baby and see if I actually need that or not. It looks kind of like this right now. So it's just very lightly gathered. So it is a little difficult to turn under this edge. But you can kind of see. That's what it looks like on the back side. Here's the front side. Alright, one more step. We're going to put in some ties. The original does not have ties except for you again in the back. We already talked about that. We're not going to do those. Um, so I just folded the raw edge under. I'm going to stitch it just all the way around with a whip stitch. Folding it down. And then we'll move on to the very last cap, which will be linen. It's also going to have a nice little ruffle. Alright, we're going to start with a horseshoe cap, or what I'm calling the horseshoe cap. And um, mostly because this is kind of horseshoe shaped. So this is the back of the cap. And I'm just going to run a very slight gathering thread uh, across most of the top. Not all of it, but most of it. So it's set plainly for a little bit, and then it's, again, very lightly gathered. It does not need much. And I'm going to just stitch with a, um, actually we're going to do a run and feld. Could do a back stitch, but why would I work? I'm just folding that seam in half, and we're just going to take little whip stitches, or hem stitches. All the way up, and that takes care of all of our raw edges. It actually kind of works out that there's going to be tucks in it because I was going to put a tuck. Um, I already hemmed the ruffle, and I looked at it and looked at it. I was like, it's like really cute with a tuck in it because when the originals I'm looking at, um, an original just plain linen cap had tucks, had a tuck in its ruffle. It's like, oh, that's really cute. Maybe I should do that. If I were to do this again, knowing that there's going to be tucks, I would have done the tucks first before doing this, because it is going to be difficult to make the tucks straight when it's curved like this. It would have been much easier when the piece was flat. But I will make do with this one, and then I'll get the measurements right, and for the next one I will do it correctly through the tucks before I sew the pieces together. Alright, so this is what it's looking like with the tucks. I just put three tucks in, so it's much more of a baby size. I like this a lot better. And so I just did fourth inch tucks 
And I did them, I tried to get them about halfway um, between this side and this side. This side's a little bit more right now because I haven't taken up the uh, seam allowance yet, but that's about equal. And I have, okay, so the original I'm technically copying is not the linen one, it's one that um, is made from window pane. It's like a, a, it's like a plaid. And um, that one has a ruffle all the way around. The linen one does not. The linen one is also a lot earlier. I don't think we're going to have quite as we very close. So I don't think I'm going to get it all the way around. I think we're going to just stop right here and just hit the bottom. So, so these tucks the same way as, or so this tuck the same way I did the other ones. And so then, we're going to sew it all on, hem it up, add some ties. Alright, so I'm putting together the ruffle. So it has this nice little tuck in it. And I'm just doing a back stitch because of the gathering. I want it to be a little bit more secure. But I am going to fill the seam as well. And the very last step, putting the ties in and uh, hemming it, which I'm just doing at the same time because why not? Ties. They get put in exactly the same way as they have this whole time. And I'm not seeing any back ties in the original. So I'm just going to go with this. And that gives me just this adorable little cap. And here's our collection of caps. So um, this is an original one and this one's an original one. But these are the rest of the ones that we made. So we got the larger ones that somehow got some black thread on them. Those match with that one. That's the original. And of course I don't have original so these we're looking at pictures. That one could have probably been a little bit longer and then the lace ones which i'm very pleased with i think they look adorable so those are all our caps but yeah i mean they're just absolutely adorable i think these are my favorite they're also the fanciest but they're so pretty and these are nice they're gonna be a little short but they're nice i do like the tucks and i'm glad we did a tuck here as well and this kind of looks like a tuck so it almost looks like a full row of tucks which I actually do like that effect. These, and here it is close up with the original, you can see how similar the braid is. And then there's those. Same size and shape. I'm actually very impressed with how close this um, modern trim came to this. Those are my caps. But thank you so much for joining me today as we made our early 19th century baby caps. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell notification so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here in the next video.